Hey friends, welcome back to another episode of the Robin Graham show. You know, we talk so much about business on the show and sometimes we talk about health and wellness, but I have to say, if we don't have health and wellness as a priority in our lives, our businesses are going to suffer. I'm curious how many of you know that your overall health and wellness And that mind, body, soul connection, when we talk about wellness, how that implements and or implements, no wrong word, impacts your business and the level of success that you can achieve when your body is not healthy, when your hormones are out of whack, when your body is deficient in something that it needs, you will have so many different physical signs and symptoms that can occur, which are going to impact your mental health, your mind, whether you're foggy in the afternoons, not foggy in the afternoons, your productivity level, and overall happiness. And if you aren't in a place where you have complete health and wellness, you could be causing a lack in other areas of your life, like your business. So we're going to dive into this today. And I I know that you are going to want to listen until the very end, because we're going to talk about ways that you can identify if something's missing or something's off kilter within your body, and then five strategies that you can actually implement to help your body heal and become more healthy so you can be more productive, more successful, and more abundant. All right. Without further ado, Amanda Hinman, welcome to The Robin Graham Show. Hi, Robin. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to have this conversation today because I do, I feel so um, deeply about the impact of our health and our, not only how we feel day to day, but how it impacts our business and our professional development and our impact. Yeah. And I know in a little while you'll share some statistics related to that. Mm -hmm. And we talked before the show that my background is in pharmacy. I have a doctor in pharmacy. So the whole health and wellness aspect and conversation is to me very, very critical in terms of how we not only perceive ourselves in our lives, but how we put ourselves forth into the world. And it really does impact our businesses, our relationships, and just our lives as a whole. So this is going to be a fabulous conversation. And I think it's going to inspire a lot of people to really evaluate where they're at on their own health and wellness journey. But before we dive into that, will you please tell the listeners a little bit about you and what brought you to this point in your journey? Sure. Yes. Happy to share. Um, so, so my story, I think is like a lot of people who end up being passionate about helping other women to be empowered and take control of their health, have more clarity. Um, I spent decades in the health and wellness arena. I was, you know, a sports performance trainer, um, a personal trainer, worked with some collegiate athletes, some professional athletes, and was very much into the world of nutrition and exercise and all of that good stuff. And then at age 33, when I was pregnant with my fourth daughter, I have four daughters. Um, oh, I grew up with four girls in my oh, family. Did you? Yeah. Oh, I love it. That's so fun. So cool. well, and it's funny because I don't have any sisters. So I was like, oh, I'm, I love that my girls have each other. <laughs> yes. That's awesome. Yes. Um, well, during that pregnancy, I had been diagnosed with an autoimmune condition called Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Uh-huh. And it's, it's fairly common and especially among women, but I remember being in complete and utter denial. Like I was I was angry when I heard this from the doctor because I was like, what do you mean? I'm somebody who is very healthy. I eat salads every day. I'm primarily vegetarian. I work out, you know, two hours a day and sweat, you know, all the time. So I just was in, it was such a shock to part of my identity of who I thought I was to have been diagnosed with what I was told was going to be a lifelong autoimmune condition that would set the stage for perhaps future autoimmune diagnoses and all these different complications down the road and taking medication for life. And I was just really, really unprepared. It felt like it came out of the blue. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's part of my mission is to help as many women as possible to never be in that situation where they feel like they are slapped with a diagnosis that comes out of the blue. And you'll hear me talk later about the importance of noticing the nuances in your body so that you do get ahead of the curve. Unlike what I had done. Um, 
So anyway, so that was the first step. And I had that diagnosis and wrote it right away. I'm like, okay, I'm going to approach this in a holistic manner. I started working with an integrative medicine doctor and, you know, quote unquote, did all the things on paper. I remember going and spending thousands of dollars and getting a ton of lab work drawn and then coming back for my second appointment for 30 minutes and was told, here's a list of all the foods to eliminate. And here's 10 supplements to start taking. And part of me was overwhelmed, but another part of me was hopeful and optimistic, like, okay, this is the natural approach and this is going to make everything better. Dove in and started cutting all the foods, gluten, dairy, all the, all the major eliminations and taking all these supplements. And then came back three months later and my thyroid antibody numbers had climbed. So I was furious because I'm like, what the heck I'm doing all the quote unquote, doing all the things. And it's not getting any traction. You know, it felt like I had just deprived myself of a lot of foods I enjoy, spent a ton of money and didn't change the end result. And then shortly after that time, my daughter, who was the oldest at the time, she was eight, had such extreme anxiety, Robin, that she started experiencing anywhere from 10 to 15 seizures in a day. And it was devastating. Like our family was completely turned upside down because, you know, as you can imagine, seeing your child struggle and not knowing if they're going to make it through the next day was just gut wrenching. And we worked with amazing pediatric neurologists down at Lurie Children's in Chicago, and they were running all the tests and everything came back inconclusive. We were told, you know, she, she's a seemingly perfectly healthy child, right? Again, it felt like I got slapped out of the blue. Like, how did this happen? She's somebody who is very energetic and sharp and witty and didn't have any health complications prior to that circumstance of being hospitalized for seizures. And we were told that, you know, there's nothing fundamentally or structurally wrong. There's no tumor or growth in her brain, but she likely just has these sometimes can be hereditary. She's predisposed to this type of neurological activity and she'll likely be on medication for life. And because of the extent of her severity and frequency of the seizure, she ended up taking four benzodiazepine medications. So eight pills a day, um, as a child, just to be able to make it through 24 hours without having an episode. And we were told she probably wouldn't drive a car because you can't drive a car on that much medication and, and, and or the trajectory seizures. for her life. Yeah. It was, it was just, again, I, it was like a total shift in identity. And I was like, this is just not going to be her future. So at that point is when I was absolutely certain that I need to understand what's going on. There has to be something, every fiber in my being knew that there had to be a way to help her and myself heal, but I needed new information. So went back to school to um, do a three-year certification in applied functional medicine. So I'll, I'll share a little bit about the industry of functional medicine is unique and different from other licensed medical practitioners who have, you know, your, your doctors, your nurses, your PAs, all of these have licensed medical boards in the world of functional medicine. There is not a universal licensing board as of yet. Hopefully there will be, but there are several different programs and and areas of study that you can go and you have to have prior certifications to be able to qualify, Mm -hmm. but then you can study. So I dove in head first and said, I have to learn and understand the interconnectedness of the body systems and how all of this is related And it really opened up and expanded my awareness to know that yes, nutrition and food is a component to health, but it is one component knowing how your body has the ability to detoxify and handle hormones and stressors in the body, how your mind body connection is so critical to balancing that sympathetic or parasympathetic state, all of these different components and the systems work together in a unique, brilliant fashion. Um, so with that knowledge, working with some other specialists, the, the great thing is transformation is powerful. My daughter was able to wean off of all of her medications in nine months time. She has been seizure free episode free ever since. Um, in fact, she actually, this past summer, she's going to be going into, um, college next year at Notre Dame and go into the U S air force Academy and commission as an officer. So she had to, to go through an extensive medical evaluation. And part of it because of her history is they had to do a sleep deprived EEG to ensure that she doesn't have any seizure activity. 
And it was funny that the neurologist is reading the report and reading her past history and is like, how is this happening? I, she hasn't been on medication for all of these years. And I said, no, she was completely healed. So he's like, well, I'm not sure I understand it, but I can give a full clean bill of health because you know, she's healthy. Just so. no proof. Yeah. That's amazing. Total. Well, congratulations on her accomplishments. That's amazing. So, okay. Yeah. So I want, let's dive in because I'm sure everybody listening is very curious. What, mm -hmm. what did you shift? What did you change when you went through the program, you learned, you got educated. So what, tactics did you or strategies did you implement to allow yes. her to heal and allow yourself to heal yeah so we implemented obviously lifestyle change new some nutritional changes and and a key thing a lot of it is what we talk about in our natural hormone solution the five r's first is root cause identifying the root cause right each person has a unique set of circumstances and biochemistry that is going to impact your body's own root cause. So it's really getting clear of what that is and knowing where your hormone levels are, knowing how your body is processing and handling, you know, stressors and, and waste to detoxify or not. Um, so root cause is step number one. Um, Can you give us an example of some root causes? Yes, absolutely. So for prime example, I'm, I'll share with you a, a client that just this week this came up. So she, someone who struggled with you know, just feeling low energy and get up and like, it's hard for her to get up and go. In fact, she's like, no, she's like, I've had a thyroid hypothyroid diagnosis for a couple of years. I'm on thyroid medication and I've still gained weight. I still, when I wake up in the morning, it's not until I have my two cups of coffee that I feel like I'm up and ready to go. Like I just feel drained and energetically kind of low. Um, she had aches and pains in her, you know, joints and, and, body, just moving, feeling really stiff. And when we looked at her, um, hormone levels, we saw that she doesn't have what's called the cortisol awakening response. Her car activity is really low. So she kind of has a flat line cortisol curve and our body is designed to have cortisol. We think of as a stress hormone, have it peak after shortly after arising, that kind of gives us our get up and go energy, and then gradually taper off throughout the day and into the evening to switch to melatonin. Well, she didn't have that. Her body didn't have the ability to produce enough cortisol. And partly we found, well, and when upon discussion and collaboration, she's like, well, I've been taking a statin medication for the past eight years. Statin medications can be helpful because they overtly reduce the production of cholesterol in the liver. However, cholesterol is a necessary component to be able to have your body make cortisol in the adrenal glands, and it needs to have strong mitochondrial function. So she had really depleted levels of CoQ10. We know that statin medications deplete CoQ10 intentionally. So she hadn't been supplementing with that. So it was like this combination and conversation to be like, oh, it makes sense. We see that your cortisol levels are flatlined and it's really impacting your ability to have, you know, pain-free living in your joints and get up and go in the morning. So giving her some support with key nutrients, some, you know, healthy fatty foods and getting her some CoQ10. It's been a huge game changer in her energy and how she feels in her body. But we wouldn't have known that if we were just guessing without mm -hmm. looking at information so the, in our hormone balance. Yeah. So what I'm hearing you say is that these labs are very important, but these are not necessarily traditional labs. Is that, am I correct in, in that? Yes, I would agree with you, Robin. So typically when we go to an annual checkup with your primary care physician, they'll do um, a series of labs. Usually it's a lipid panel, a cholesterol check, a blood count, and um, perhaps a metabolic panel, which is great. It's a good starting point. But I always inform and educate our community because looking at something through a functional lens of what is optimal, what is ideal, is very different than looking at just the general markers through what we call the reference range, right? They're going to, your doctor will typically tell you if something is diagnosable because it's outside of the reference range. Mm -hmm. Well, the reference range is actually simply reflecting what is 95% of the population. Cause it's two standard deviations of the people tested in this country. Right. Right. And we know that the majority of the average American is not optimally healthy. So it means you're common if you're within the reference range, but it doesn't by any means mean that your body is functioning at an optimal level. So yes, these labs are different. We look at hormone metabolites 
So the Dutch hormone complete is one of my favorite hormone tests, and it gives you an indica indication, indication of cortisol, melatonin, um, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, a lot of your key hormones. And we can see how your body is able to not only utilize them, but detoxify and process them or not. If you're getting stuck and there's kind of some reactive activity happening because of lack of nutrients. Mm -hmm. And I would imagine, especially for women 40 to 65, when hormones are especially fluctuating and it's more common to be diagnosed with an autoimmune disease or other, other challenges like hypercholesterolemia or some of those other things that, mm -hmm. or even diabetes, um, that it's really important to have a good, um, what do I want to say? Uh, like fingertip or whatever pulse yeah. pulse is what I'm trying to pulse. say pulse yes. on, on those things. So that's interesting. What was the name of the, that lab again? I want to make sure I get it right in the show notes. Yes. It's called the Dutch hormone. Dutch. Okay. Complete. That's what I thought. That's what I thought you said. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. All right. Yes. So the next R is the next R is replenish nutrients. So every single cell in the body is nutrient driven, right? Mm -hmm. So when we talk about the nutrients to be able to make hormones or the nutrients needed to be able to properly detoxify the, um, the metabolites of the hormones, all of that, whether we're looking at our liver or kidney or, um, you know, any part of the body, those cells run on nutri nutrients. And so being able to identify the most common areas for women that I see the patterns of, you know, 40, 50, early sixties is suboptimal protein levels, amino acids. So in terms of, in particular, looking at, um, and I, I recommend animal sources of protein, which I know sometimes is contradictory. We hear all sorts of different information. You can obviously get protein from vegetarian sources as well. It typically takes more steps for your body to be able to convert and to process those. So you have to have, again, have an, a bandwidth of extra energy to do mm -hmm. that. If you're in a healing phase or trying to rebalance, typically making it as easy as your body to find that balance is, is beneficial. So animal proteins, things like poultry, fish, shellfish, eggs, um, lean meats, obviously high quality is best. Um, but protein is critical for those amino acids and also fiber. That's the other area that I often see suboptimal for women. So fiber, and we can find it in our fresh fruits and veggies as a common source, but even more specifically is I'm, I'm known as the bean lady. Cause I always talk about the value of beans, beans believe it or not, because they have high amounts of fiber in ratio to the serving size. So mm -hmm. only, you know, a couple tablespoons of beans can give you about roughly five grams of fiber per serving. So that can be really and they have protein too. And they add some protein <laughs> as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's awesome. I love that. And mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's funny because some, some people are so, oh, no, no animal proteins, but the reality is I think everything in moderation and when mm -hmm. you do it in a healthy way and you do have high quality or organic or all natural, I, it really does make a difference. So uh, it does. I, and I will say again, everyone's unique. This is, there's no custom prescription for any person, but that was a huge part of both my daughter and my own healing journey is we had not been eating animal proteins very much at all for about the four years preceding our diagnoses. And for her, I'm just going to kind of blow people's minds, but especially she was young and she was a growing eight-year-old at the time. So it's different, obviously different physiological needs, but she got to a point for part of her healing journey, she was eating six small palm sized servings of protein, animal protein per day in order to have enough raw material to make new cells so that she could create new neuro pathways in the brain, right? We wanted her, the pathway that was triggering seizure activity to kind of get, you know, overgrown. Think of it like a walking outside in fresh snow. You don't want the yeah. well-traveled path to be the one that is the default. You want to create a new pathway in the brain. Well, you need new cells to be able to create new pathways. So, mm -hmm. you know, again, if you're thinking about healing and rebuilding the body, sometimes having more of those amino acids available can be beneficial. Yeah. I love that. Okay. The third mm -hmm. R moving right. The third along. R is restoring <laughs> digestive fire. So mm -hmm. eating the food 
is oftentimes a far cry from actually getting those nutrients inside the cell. And the thing that happens in between is the digestion and the absorption of those nutrients. So part of it is um, a super simple test that I always tell people is how are, what is the experience of eating like for you? Do you often eat kind of unconsciously and just kind of doing other things or sitting down and not even paying attention? Because if you're not adequately chewing and noticing the texture and the taste of food in your mouth, your chances are your body is not able to fully digest those nutrients, whether it be the vitamins and the minerals or the enzymes and the amino acids, they're just not going to be able to be broken apart. And so even if you choose like healthy salads, like I was, but you're eating, go, 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 your body's not getting the benefit of all of those nutrients that you're taking on board. So being willing to learn new ways. And then, you know, we have ways of testing your adequacy of stomach acid levels and your gut health to see if those nutrients are actually getting to the cells to be absorbed. Mm, that's that's but interesting. Keeping, yeah. Restoring digestive fire starts with what happens in your mouth. I mean, yeah. I, I share this statistic all the time. If you can chew roughly 20 bites before swallowing, which is really feels different from what most of us do day in and day out. It, it almost liquefies the food in your mouth. Your saliva is the first step in the digestive process. It's the only part that is voluntary. So you can influence it and it has a huge impact because once the stomach food is in the stomach, only about a quarter of a tablespoon every 20 minutes is passed through to the small intestine to start to utilize that process. Well, so many times we're just like choo choo swallow down the hatchet, choo choo uh -huh. swallow down the hatchet, and then that means all of this bolus of food is sitting in your stomach, and your stomach acid may not have the strength or the bandwidth to really continue to break it apart. Yeah, well enough. Yeah. yeah. Okay, four. The fourth R. Four is to reset your thinking, and this is a chance to really become aware of your thoughts and your perceptions about daily experiences. Most of us have a lot of stressors and, you know, myself included, no judgment here, myself included all of the time that we think about becoming aware of how many times we are experiencing negative emotion, because when you're experiencing a negative emotion, whether it be frustration, whether it be worry, whether it be overwhelm, whether it be um, not enough, whatever it is, that is signaling through your nervous system. My world is not safe. Something here could be dangerous and threaten my survival. I know it sounds kind of crazy. Even if you're like just overwhelmed thinking about the to-do list you have to do at all your work meetings and dropping off the kids and that it's your, your, your well-being, your safety is not on the line, but your nervous system, your brain does not know that. Uh -huh. So it will trigger the sympathetic stress response in the body. And that essentially tells your body to store fat because we have to keep a reserve of energy in case we need to save our life and to deprioritize digestion, healing, recovery, because it's saying we have to be on high alert. There's stranger danger that could be happening. Uh -huh. So again, we have to become aware of our thoughts because your thoughts are always the preceding factor to create an emotional response. So yeah. noticing when you feel a negative emotion, the, 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 the phrase that I love to start to get in the habit of asking all the time, I feel blank insert the negative emotion you feel because the story I'm telling myself is, and start to just allow yourself the space and the bandwidth to unpackage. What is that? What is it that I'm believing? What must I believe to be true right now in order to feel this negative emotion? Yeah. And then and question the validity of that. Absolutely. And we have a lot of episodes on mindset. I talk a lot about mindset and, um, so I will link some of those in the show notes listeners so that you can go and check out some of the other episodes on mindset and how you can navigate that. But mm -hmm. just like Amanda said, it's really important to, to catch those thoughts and challenge them. Like, are these yeah. thoughts realistic? And chances are they are not. Ask yourself, would someone you think you know, love and respect be thinking the same thing about yourself or the situation as you are? And if the answer to that question is no, then change those thoughts. The more you change those thoughts, and this is this is my 5C method that I have in my book, but it's the more you change those thoughts, the more control you have over them, and then the more confident you're going to be in your decisions. So it's the same thing. Um, the more confident you are 
in the world around you and your life experiences and your thoughts, the more your body is going to be in unity from the mind and the body perspective, Mm -hmm. that connection. Yeah, absolutely, Robin. And what I love about it is that component is so powerful because when you, like you said, when you can change, when you can become aware of it and then change the thoughts, it frees up energy. It frees Mm -hmm. up capacity. And, um, one of the statistics that I always find astounding for women, did you know that 24% of women during their forties and their fifties will have to take at least 34 days off of work or away from their profession because of their own health challenge. So that means wow. lost income, right? That means lost impact. That means additional stressors on yourself and your loved ones. When you just literally are not in the capacity to be able to function and to perform as you would normally want to. So having the bandwidth in the practice up front to become aware of that negative thought pattern, because it has such a huge impact on our physiology mm-hmm. really frees up energy that can be used in healing that can be used in positively influencing in your yeah. business and, and to use you know, proactively in other arenas yeah. and saves you money. It really absolutely just, it does. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. What's the fifth R and the fifth R is removing toxins. So, and this, I think this happens in kind of two different phases. I look at it. One is your body's ability to remove the toxins that are get inside and, tr- you know, internally in the systemic body. And that has to do with the health of your liver and kidneys and lymphatic tissue. So we look primarily at what are the nutrient levels? Another test that I, that we use often is called micronutrient testing. And it looks at what are the levels of the nutrients inside the cells, not just swimming around in the blood, but what actually makes it into the cells. So looking at the health of your body's cells so that it can remove toxins and metabolic waste. The other thing is being aware of your home environment. I mean, there are a lot of, a lot of things that we can't control, but within your own home where you spend a lot of your time, there are so many choices that you can have influence over that can decrease the exposure to all of the toxic chemicals that are in our cleaning supplies, in her, you know, makeup and hair care products that are in all of our just sphere of living day in and day mm-hmm. out. Yeah, absolutely. So two things I'd like for you to give examples of one is micronutrients, because we're starting to hear more and more of that. And I think it's something that's relatively new to the scene in terms of general conversations. Um, so I would love for you to give a few examples of micronutrients. And then also I would love for you to share a list of just a few of those toxic toxins, like that are in those things that we use every day, like hair products, you know, you took the, the sulfites, the parabens, like all those kind of things that would be great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So micronutrients, a, c- a couple of key micronutrients to look at are, for example, like I'll talk about vitamin D. A lot of people know the importance of vitamin D can be really helpful for immune support for mm-hmm. gut health. It, it, it goes a long way to support our gut integrity of the gut lining. Um, but it's also important to know that vitamin D three also has cofactors. So if, for example, someone starts to take high dose vitamin D, oftentimes they'll go to a doctor's appointment, see that their vitamin D levels are low and be recommended to take 5,000 I use of vitamin D right away per day. Now I'm always cautious to say, let's start low and slow because vitamin D can galvanize magnesium and magnesium is an important mineral that we need for over 300 reactions in the body. So if you all of a sudden start to take a much higher dose of vitamin D3, but you haven't balanced that with adequate support with magnesium, that could start to deplete the body. So looking at what are the magnesium levels, what are K, vitamin K2 is another important um, vitamin that works in concert with vitamin D3. So ha- that's just one example of having an awareness of where your body is on a big picture frame, instead of just looking at one isolated nutrient per se at a time. Mm-hmm. Um, another key area is to know our B vitamins, several B vitamins, B5, B6. B6 is another common one that's often depleted with um, alcohol consumption. It's depleted with oral birth control, like over-the-counter birth control pills that depletes vitamin B6. Um, it is really critical for 
uh, many functions in the body, including histamine degradation. So if we think of someone who has a lot of headaches, a lot of aches and pains, or a lot of like reaction to seasonal allergies, histamine response, right? It mm-hmm. could be because they have suboptimal levels of B6 that is necessary to degrade histamine in the body, right? So knowing all of these little nuances of where different vitamin and mineral levels are can just paint a picture of like, oh, well, this makes total logical sense. I can't tell you how many times women are like, oh, well, that makes sense why my body is struggling yeah. with this. Yeah, it makes total sense. Your body is yeah. brilliant. And when we yeah. can put in the pieces of the puzzle, then we know where to have targeted support. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, and then, so then lastly, those just key things to look for when when people are buying like hair products or makeup to avoid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, mean, obviously the cleaning supplies, like you can pretty much guess if you can't say it, it's probably toxic. (laughs) Yeah. I was going to say, and so there's such a swath of information. There's so many different things. And the good news is we have a lot of uh, available options on the market now, so much more than we used to have, but obviously your parabens, your, um, you know, there, there are a lot of, there are a lot of chemicals in general that if you go to that, one of my favorite, um, websites is the environmental working group ewg.org. You can go and put in any product there and it will tell you what's in it. It will give it a rating, a safety rating, but it will also um, give you alternative options. Like if you're looking at a shampoo, for example, or if you're looking at a, you know, makeup line or something, for example, it will give you. So I actually think that is a great resource because you can kind of check what you're using now and then see some other alternative options. So if you want to link the EWG website, that yeah, might I be will. a good one to link in the show notes. And I always say, you know, err on the side of looking for, proactively looking for the the less chemical options. So even cleaning, I don't know if you've ever heard of Norwex, but even cleaning your yeah. house and wiping down countertops and stuff with different, that doesn't even use any spray or any chemical. It just allows that microfibers in the, cloths themselves to help pick up the dust and the, and the, you know, bacteria and things like that are on your surfaces, but those are good swaps. The other thing that's really important. And again, this isn't necessarily a specific product, but opening up your windows in your house can go a long way. So if you just set a timer, even if it's once a week where you're going to crack the windows and sometimes it's cold or whatever, but if you just crack the windows for 15 minutes in, you know, each room in the house, getting that fresh air circulation goes a long way for helping to reduce that exposure of what is off gassing in our house every single week. Yeah. Yeah. So this is listeners. I have a tip. So I take, I save all my citrus peels, lemons, Mm -hmm. oranges, because I eat an orange, like practically every day, limes, whatever. And I will put them in a mason, a large mason jar And then I'll store them for a little while until the jar is full. And then I add vinegar to it and I let it sit for a few days at sometimes even a month or so or more, depending on how many, how long it takes me to get the peels. But, um, and then, so I make my own cleaning solution and it smells good. I love that. And because it's vinegar, it kills a ton of germs, but it, the citrus makes it smell better. So I just put it in a spray bottle I ordered off Amazon. So (laughs) I'm going to totally anyway, do that, great. Rob, and I love yeah, that. It's great. Yeah. So, all right. So Amanda, tell us a little bit about um, how people can connect with you, learn more from you, maybe even work with you. Absolutely. My pleasure, Robin. So the best way to do is to go to hinmanholistic.com. That's H-I-N-M-A-N holistic. Dot com. You can learn more about our natural hormone solution program for women in their 40s, 50s, and 60s. Um, you can also receive my free hormone health assessment and health kit. So this is a great chance. Like I said, there are, t- there are six main hormones that we help you to self reflect and get a gauge of where those levels may be. Now, again, this isn't lab testing, but there, you can tell a lot from the symptoms that you experience and noticing the nuances in your body about cortisol, insulin, thyroid, estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. So you can take that hormone health assessment. I always think that's a great place to start and get a gauge of where levels may be a little bit, you know, suboptimal and what you may want to investigate further. 
Awesome. Thank you so much for being here, Amanda. Listeners, if you found this information helpful, please share it with other people in your life. You know, if if you're a man listening, share it with your wife, your significant other. If you're a female listening, take action and start to really look at your overall health and your overall day-to-day experiences with your body and see where, where there might be a disconnect. And please share the episode with anybody that you know, as well as leave a rating and review so that we can get more guests like Amanda, who are experts to come on to the show. Thanks so much, everybody. And I will see you next week.